Hey everybody, welcome back to another Timmons Podcast. I'm your host Timmons and this is my podcast, Interesting Conversations with Cool People. And man, do I have a cool conversation, an interesting conversation today. But but first, before we get to that, let's get to some business. So yes, I've got a proposition for my listeners. Yo, I figured out, actually after talking to today's guest, this helped, but I've uh, been thinking about what ways can I do to have, what can, what can I do to improve the podcast? And I've identified that two additional cameras would be helpful. So one on my guest face, one on my face, and the wide view that I'm doing currently on the YouTube channel. So be easy to clip stuff, make it really professional, all that fun stuff. AI is super great. And uh, I've done some research into some editing that will just, you know, I can do all that without having to really do much more. It'll just improve the quality of my podcast. Currently, I'm filming everything I do on my iPhone. So I thought maybe I'd open it up to you guys. I said, hey, does anyone in my audience have an extra iPhone, an old iPhone laying around? If so, please hit me up. And here's the proposition. I'm going to give you 10 free shout outs. Well, they're not free because you give me your iPhone for the shout outs. So it'd be something like a trade. So whatever you want to say in this segment at the start of the podcast, I will shout it out. It could be 10 things, the same thing, all 10 episodes, or it could be, you know, uh, a different thing each episode. I don't care. It's about a $200 value, and I feel like that's fair for an iPhone. So hit me up. If you have an iPhone just chilling, if you want to see the podcast progress and you have something you want to let the people know who listen to this podcast, uh, you want them to know something shoot me a message on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, Timmons podcast at gmail.com. All that information is down below in the show notes. And I would love to, uh, do a little trade and, uh, improve the video, uh, the video quality, the video editing of this podcast. So, um, that being said, if you are watching on YouTube, this is another reason why I need a couple different cameras. My video quit about uh we paused and did some stuff then came back and when when we paused when i restarted the video that file isn't working on my phone and so i'm not able to upload that to youtube so sorry about that um again having two or three more cameras would make this a lot easier some of that stuff would meant wouldn't wouldn't happen as much so cool yes please hit me up if you have an iphone holler at me uh an old iphone and i'd love 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 to do a little trade so uh also today's sponsor is today's episode sponsored by quiet river massage and revival located in syracuse indiana jasmine does 90 60 30 minute massages she does hot rocks essential oils She's awesome. She's at Rich Beauty Supply in Syracuse, Indiana. And you can find her at quiet underscore river underscore massage on Instagram. And her website's going to be linked below in both YouTube and any podcast uh, system you're using. You can go below. You can hit the the link to it and go book a massage. Definitely, definitely, definitely book a massage. Follow her on Instagram. And if you have had a massage by her, could you please leave her a review? That helps her get out uh, her information to others who are looking up, you know, what's the best massage in Syracuse, Indiana or Goshen. Hit her reviews up. Um, that would be much appreciated. So cool. Um, yes, today's guest. I got to sit down with Henrique. He is awesome. We talked about the Goshen City Football Club. Um, guys, what a cool conversation. What a cool guy. I'm so it's impressive to see just something that comes from a thought to where what they've done and how they've done it. Um, uh, I really enjoyed chatting with him. But okay, enough of me talking about this. Let's get to the conversation. See you guys on the next podcast. And we're live. Enrique, dude, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Cheers. Uh, I don't forget. Hey, there yep. we go. Bro, welcome. So so first off, I mean, yeah, for, tell little people who you are, um, and let's start with that. Yeah, my name is Enrique, or Henry. You can call me Enrique, Henrique, or Henry. Or if you're Portuguese, you can say Enrique. <laughs> Enrique in Espanol. So... There are so many variations of my name, so don't even worry about it. You can call me Henry. Henry, that, okay. That's a good way to go. But yeah, my name is Henrique. I come from Brazil. I grew up in Brazil, and I graduated from Goshen College 22, and I started my my semi-professional soccer team a year and a half ago. And yeah, Goshen City FC. Goshen City FC, yeah. We met at church, so we both had... Um, uh, we both have a young one in our life <laughs> yep. and, uh, we, we did a 
baby dedication at church. And so we stood next to each other. And so then the next week, um, I saw you at church and we started talking and you you tell me about, I'm like, all right, so what do you do for work? And you've rattled off three different things. I was like, dang bro. And a child like, holy cow. So, um, that was very interesting. So I was like, okay, we need to get you. And then I started seeing stuff about, I don't know if it's just social media, but I started seeing stuff about the football club, the good, you know, uh, and and I think Good for Goshen did something about it. And I was like, all right, well, I just talked to him. I need to get him on a podcast, bro. So, um, yeah, one of the things you told me, this is not about any of the things that we just talked about, but that was your first time out at church was the baby dedication, right? Actually, with, with him? We came, we, we used to go to the same church a couple of months ago, yeah. but it was never consistently. But yeah, we decided whenever we had the child, we have Matias, he's five months now. Yeah. He's just a blessing in our lives. We decided that we wanted to do the dedication and yeah, baptize. Yeah. And yeah, we started to come back to the church. We are trying to, to be more consistent, but yeah, it was pretty pretty fun and there was other people doing that and we felt together and yeah, church is a place that I don't know, just bring good things and yeah, yeah we met we met each other there. It creates connection from places that we would we wouldn't even imagine. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, there's connection. And we're all doing kind of the same thing. I hear you on the consistency part because uh, my daughter, Noah, she likes to nap right when church starts. So it's like she's going down for a nap. Church is starting. It's like, well, uh, do we go? Do we not? What's the, you know, so I totally understand that. Um, when Kyle, who is our pastor, uh, mentioned that we're going to do a baby dedication, he mentioned that there's five couples. And I'm counting on my hands. I'm like, I know four of them. Who's the fifth one? Is you guys. So that was that was cool to connect there and um that yeah, was a really we're kind of an outsider. Sometimes you go, fine. sometimes you don't. That's but totally fine. Yeah. Kyle actually did our wedding. So really? Yeah. Yeah, that's a thing we have in common because he did mine. Uh, um I think you told uh, me, yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. That is cool. Um yeah, that's a special thing. I don't know how many ways he's done. He's done some. I mean, you're a pastor, you gotta do some, but uh it's cool to do that. Did you guys do your wedding here in Goshen? We did at the sixth street. Oh yeah. Uh, where Kevin Cook. And yeah, Cook the Chow's. Yeah, the yeah. Chow's. Yeah. We did it right there. That's a gorgeous place to do it. Yeah, it was very special. And my well, my father and mother, they came from Brazil to here. That's, so that was very special. So it was probably small, smaller. Yeah, it was a very small. The more intimate. Of, more intimate. Yeah. And yeah. That's interesting because um, we got married in 2021. Um, and it was a very small wedding too, cause it was middle of COVID and we were like, do we could do a big wedding? We could, but I really don't want to plan it. So it was just our families and it was, I'm so thankful we did that. You know, did it was, you make people mad. I think because of when it was people understood, Okay. you know, I think if it was 2019 and we did that, people wouldn't be happy. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, it's just difficult to please everybody, but. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> That's life. <laughs> That's life, yeah. When did you guys get married? 22, November. Okay. 28th. So right after you graduated, basically? I was still a play, uh, student and a play, soccer player. I was, a, I was really? playing. Actually, we had a game, I had a game right after it. So it was a Friday. No way. And then I had to, we didn't go to a honeymoon right after. You went to go play your game. I had to play my last game ever. Wow. Yeah. Then you went on your honeymoon? And then we went to the honeymoon. Nice. We went to Chicago and spent some days there. Did you win? No. <laughs> no my career as a soccer player has been very difficult. Yeah. And that day was pretty difficult, too. It was <sighs> like, if we scored one goal, we would have went to the playoffs for the first time since 18, 2018. Wow. And we hit, there was a ball that we hit the post. And because we didn't score that goal... We didn't go to the. Oh, it was that close. That's tough. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, let's back it up. So, how did you get to Goshen College? Because you told me a little bit of the story, but you're from Brazil. And how do you get to, you know, almost going to the playoffs that last? You know what I mean? Like, what's that story? Yeah. So, as a high school student, I didn't care as much as about studying. I, I, I wanted to play soccer, and yeah. that was my life. And I just. Whenever I was finishing high school, I had to decide, okay, or I'm going to try to be professional or I'm going to study. Mm-hmm. And the third option came is if you go to the United States, you can study and get a full tuition or a good scholarship to do both. And yeah, I started to to study in English mm. and I got... Was that, that was in high school? Yeah, when I was 17, 18. Okay. Yeah. 
when I finished high school, actually, I started to study English and I, I went to a, another city. There was a soccer complex that I lived there for eight months. Wow. We used to practice twice a day and study English twice a day. Wow. So it was very intense and it was amazing because everybody was with the same goal yeah. to come to the U.S. And fun fact, now I have a, a player, that, a friend that we came together to U.S. He went to Minnesota okay. and I went to Virginia first okay. to junior college. And now we both are in Goshen. No way. But yeah, that's how did he get here? Well, yeah, okay, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can. We have a thousand stories we could run down. Yeah, but yeah, I went to Virginia to a junior college called Richard Bland of William and Mary. Okay, it's forty-five minutes away from the capital, Richmond. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to Richmond. Yeah, it's a pretty nice town. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful it out is. there. Yeah, the weather is much better than here. <laughs> It's because you got the ocean, man. That kind of like keeps it all uh, somewhat same. You know what I mean? It, there's that body of water that heats it and cools it. But yeah. yeah but yeah, I, I, when I came to the United States, it was a huge hit. Cultural differences mm-hmm. and the the difference on the, the language. It was very difficult to express yourself in another language. Yeah. But the good thing is that I have internationals that were in the same boat as me. Yeah. I had other Brazilians that helped me understand how everything worked in the college but yeah i had a very good time i stayed there there a year and a half i think i grew i grew so much in terms yeah. of playing soccer in terms of going to classes i remember the first week i went to classes and i was doing a psychology class in english oh wow how can i understand what's going on <laughs> yeah but i survived i got all c's of my first semester wow so I passed but yeah and then the first season that i played at Virginia was my best season in college ever. We wow. went to the semifinal of the playoffs. We finished second on regular season, and I had an amazing season with so many assists. I played as a left back, so okay. always going down the line and crossing the ball. Oh, wow. And I got to know in my first semester uh, a, a player called Tomas da Fonseca, and then he transferred to Goshen. Okay. So when I arrived at Goshen College... Sorry, I arrived in the United States in January of 2018, 2018. Okay. okay. So that's a spring. Yeah. So I got to know some people that left because they just finished their second, oh, second year. Yeah. So I got those guys and then I got a new bunch of people coming the fall. And then you're so, kind of the older person yeah. at, at that point. Yeah. Right. And another thing that I didn't tell, the coach that recruited me to this uh, junior college, he left whenever I arrived. Two weeks that I was there, he left. To go to D1 school. Oh, wow. He was Brazilian. That's why he recruited me. Wow. So I arrived and he left. And then we didn't have a coach for the whole spring season. Oh, my word. So that was... That and so, was, yeah, you came in halfway through the year, yeah. basically. Okay. So it was a mess. Yeah. So, but, yeah, so I got to know Tomas. Mm-hmm. And he came to Goshen. He got recruited. I don't know how, but he got recruited. And then he, I had that connection. So I played the fall and the spring with the Virginia uh, College. Mm-hmm. And then he said, hey... Goshen College just changed their head coach, and we need players. I have a left back, a Brazilian left back. So that that's how the connection started. Wow. And then you just played really well, so they probably were like, okay, let's snag this guy. Yeah. Right? They Because you guys have just gone to the semifinals or whatever. Yeah, as you yeah. said. And then they offered me a full tuition, and I couldn't. Oh, you can't say no to that. I can't say no to that. Yeah. And I came. 2019, wow. August. So then you did three years at Goshen College? Because you did one year. Four kind seasons. So it four was seasons. Okay. from the fall. Yeah. Because of COVID, we got a, a, another season. So it was four yeah. seasons. And then the fifth season as an assistant coach. Wow. That Last was 2023? Yeah. 2023. Yeah. Wow. That's wild. Oh, and so uh, was it a little bit of a cultural shift as well going from Virginia to Indiana? It was. <laughs> in a good way. Okay. Because in Virginia, people are not as friendly in terms of international students mm. as Goshen. Goshen, when really? I came to Goshen, everybody just loved that I was Brazilian international. Yeah, played guitar, played yeah. soccer, and everybody knows Pele. Yeah, and yeah, it was amazing. And everything related to Goshen was, yeah, Goshen became my home. That's yeah. cool. Where all right, so? Where are you at? From where are you from? At in Brazil, São Paulo. São Paulo. Okay. Um, huge city there's yeah it's a bigger city than new york oh wow is that the one where they have the the statue no, no what's rio a, rio yeah that's the that's the capital right no the capital is brasilia oh really brasilia really yeah but rio was the capital hundreds of years ago okay yeah 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 that's um 
Yeah, it's iconic. It is. Yeah. yeah Rio is special. Yeah. So it, you grew up in that city, basically, um, from, you know, uh, one to 18, yeah. basically. Yes, yeah. I did. And I had my parents, my parents got divorced when I was two, so I grew up with my mom okay. most of my life. And yeah, I went to went to see my father in the weekends and yeah yeah but yeah always in sao paulo playing soccer playing video games with my friends <laughs> i had a very good childhood that's awesome and going to the beach whenever we were to travel but yeah i can't say that i experienced the good part of brazil but brazil yeah. there are a lot of bad things too oh yeah i mean i think you can find that in any place too right you know i'd yeah. assume but um What's that like going from a huge city bigger than New York to now Goshen, that it's a little bit smaller town, just a ta- just a tad bit smaller than just a tad, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, in Virginia was even smaller. It, okay, yeah. Our campus was in the middle of nowhere, so oh, you wow. couldn't walk to to places. It was in the middle of farms. So wow. And international so. students, we didn't have cars. Yeah. So we were stuck on the college twenty four seven. Oh wow! Yeah. So, we, that is a culture shock. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, yeah, I was 18, 19, so we were doing some things that we shouldn't be doing. Yeah. <laughs> but we had we had a lot of fun. Yeah. And that just, yeah, as an international student in the U.S., we just bond together in a way that it's just so difficult to explain because yeah. we are in the same boat. We don't have our families here. We cannot leave. Right. So we Thanksgiving. Just, Thanksgiving. We just stay together and just play video games or play soccer or yeah. 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 No, that makes sense. Um, that's tough. It's tough, but it's also like cool to have that connection too with yeah. those, the, the different people. Yeah. And then just hanging out with the boys every day. And yeah. Yeah. Going to class. And well, in probably part of that connection allowed the, the build those relationships to come to Goshen. It's crazy yes. when you look back and see the tapestry of how all this stuff plays together. Yes, it is. Right. And then Tomas came to Goshen. And right. And I came to Goshen. Right. His brother came to Goshen. No way. <laughs> so I played with both of them. Wow. And both of them were goalkeepers. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. So. And then. Go. Yeah. When COVID hit and then 2021, COVID was still a thing and uh, the airports were shut down. And then I saw, I was playing soccer in Ohio. Mm-hmm. And then when we were done with the season, I, I was looking a uh, ticket for Portugal, which was like 200 bucks. Oh, wow. And then I went there. I have I have an uncle there that lives in Lisboa, Lisbon. Okay. And then I, I went to the to the house of Tomas and Matias. And yeah, we hang, we hang out. No Thomas. way. So you got to actually, because yeah, flights were super cheap during they COVID. Were crazy cheap. Yeah. Wow, so you're like, okay, yeah. I'm going to go visit you guys. That's so sick. Yeah, so yeah. we created that, that connection that I really went to their country and even visit their home. Wow. Do you, um, are they still in Goshen or are they now elsewhere? No, they, they're both back in Portugal. Wow. Matias left, yeah, January, okay. December. And actually, Matias helped me create Goshen CDFC. He was wow. my right arm and he was the goalkeeper for Goshen City. He was wow. Like, yeah, so yeah, Tomas and Matias are a big part of my career life. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. How did that all kind of come together cuz that's really got some fuel behind it. Like things are it's it's moving. It's, it's shaking. Moving. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, tell me a little bit. I mean, it probably comes from being you know, from Goshen College and then also being assistant coach, but I'd love to hear how all this kind of came together. Yeah, so as a student athlete, when summer comes around, you want to play. You don't mm-hmm. want to just sit around and don't do anything. So most players in the high level, they play summer leagues. And I it wasn't different for me. Some, some international students, they come back to their country, but lots of international students, they want to keep playing and getting better and getting better and maybe yeah. become professional. That was my dream. Yeah. So I had to, in Virginia, I played in a summer league in Charlottesville Mm -hmm. and it was an amazing experience and then I moved to Goshen and then Goshen there's nothing close by Mm. so I had to go to Ohio to play wow where at in Ohio Dayton 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 Ohio so you gotta drive two plus hours no it was four hours but they offered free housing oh wow okay for for some players for players that were higher enough level yeah, yeah enough level 
And yeah, that was m the best experience of my life. They played in a league that was top notch. And yeah, and when I w Goshen, there's so much soccer in Goshen mm -hmm. from high school to college to so many Latinos around. And even the Mennonite soccer is so popular in Goshen. Yeah. From the 50s, the first team, I think, from Goshen College started in the 50s. Wow. And that's before. Yeah, our time for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think yeah, before my so, parents' time. Yeah. It's so in 22, I was thinking, okay, I want to play again. It was my, I was a senior already. Yeah. And then a team came up in Ligonier called Fox United. Okay. And then I said, okay, let's try it. It's in a lower level than the other teams that I have played, but it's close by, 30 minutes mm -hmm. away. That's what I have, right? That right. I want to. It's I have closer to Dayton, for sure. Yeah, I have a girlfriend that just graduated, and we are living together. Let's. I'm going to stay around and play local. And, yeah, when I started to play with them, and I saw that the costs weren't that high, and then they didn't have head coach, and they weren't managing the team. I What I thought was... Maybe I could do that in Goshen as well. Yeah. So that's where the idea came from, from the need to play locally. And, and then not having the option. And not having the option. And the option that we had wasn't the same level that I thought we I would like to. Yeah, or that you had experience in Dayton and elsewhere. You've experienced a lot higher levels. So you're like, okay, well, why not bring that to Goshen? Yeah, and right. then when I dove deep, and then that was just a thought, a moment thought. And then I just started to dive deeper and deeper in this rabbit hole. And <laughs> I did, you know how Google is nowadays. You can Google anything and you learn so much just by Googling for right. hours. Right. There's so much so information. So much information there. So I just got to know, okay, that's not too expensive. So, yeah, that's how the idea came. Yeah. And, and this at this point you were, so this is right as you're ending college, right? This is right. Yeah, I should graduate in the spring of 22. Okay. But then I decided, okay, I'm going to come back for my last dance in 23. Oh, okay. No, sorry. 22, fall 22. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I played the Fox United in the spring of 22, and then I was deciding, should I play one more year in Goshen, should I not? And then I decided, okay, I'm going to play the last time with my friends, 22. And yeah, so, and then while I was playing from... March, April of 22, spring of 22, I started to have those ideas of Goshen CDFC. And yeah, the whole summer I started to put the project together. I started to go to my business professors and say, hey, what do you think about this idea? How can I make this better? Hmm. And they helped me build a very solid project yeah. in all the areas. Kind of the plan and, to the and strategy. The, and the main target was how can I be attractive to sponsors because I don't have money. Right, I need to raise money. <laughs> yeah, to, to a college money. kid, bro. Yeah, yeah I need to raise fifteen thousand dollars. Wow, and wow, and that's not too much, but for a college kid, is too yes. much. Yeah, it's not enough for you to do on your own. I mean, you could do it; it'd be very tough. But it, it's also not out of grasp. Yeah, yeah. So my whole project was towards okay, let's focus on on how to make it profitable, not profitable, to be attractive to sponsors, and yeah, and I think just. I am a religious person, but not too much. I'm mm -hmm. still trying to find that in, within me. But I, I believe that God just pushed me. Hey, go, go this, yeah. go this way. Well, I'm and sure the idea too, like the idea too, the idea out of nowhere, and you're like, you start going down it, and start, and it starts to flow together, and it starts yeah. to build. And the more I dove deeper, I saw that's a freaking good idea. Yeah. Can you curse here? That's a fucking good idea. Yeah, you can. You, know? you can curse here. Yeah. <laughs> You're more than welcome more to. More than welcome. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, and then I talked to the prof business professors, to my coaches, and then yeah. I went to the athletic director. Everybody was loving it. Right. And then I wow. went to the president of Goshen College. That's just, that's the highest. That right. Could go. And she loved it. She she said, oh, that's a very good idea. We are focusing on community with the kids. Mm-hmm. And she said, okay, I'm going to put you in contact with the mayor, with those key people in town that know soccer. So, like, she just made my life so much easier in terms wow. of knocking on doors that people yeah. wouldn't enter. She opened them up for you. She opened them up for me. Wow. And then I went to the mayor. That was Jeremy Stutzman. Yep. And he, he loved the idea, and he wanted to be a sponsor, and then he... Yeah, he just connected me with... Yeah, he opened some doors, too. That's he awesome. Did. He did. And Jim Alvarez... Yeah. 
he connected me with Everance. Yeah. And Everance was the first business that said, okay, let's bet on this guy that have this crazy idea. Yeah. Because that was that was it. I had a good idea, but I was just a student, international right. student, and played soccer. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So they were the first one, which then probably gave you some weight to be like, hey, I have a sponsor. Would you consider sponsoring as well? And they're like, well, oh, Everance is in it. And Everance is known, especially yes. in the Mennonite community. Yes. Like, um, and they, I mean, they are well known in this area for sure. Yes. And yeah, even a little before Everance, when you have the mayor of the city trying yeah. to pull some strings, I had meetings with Lippert. Wow. And I had meetings with. Yeah, Intera and Intera sponsored us for the first year. This year they're not sponsoring us. Maybe, hopefully, in the future they will yeah. come back. But yeah, Leaper, I almost closed. I was almost closed the contract with us, but they said, "Yeah, it's too risky. We don't know what's going to happen." Right. So, well, yeah, they got to see the attendance. They probably yeah, see all the and I understand that too. Right. right. But yeah, I was very blessed to have all of this happening wow while i was playing while i was getting married while my, my <laughs> life was happening yeah. but this business was just going crazy wow yeah so did you secure the fifteen thousand needed to start i secured much more than that <clears throat> wow yeah so then that gave you the capital to get the ball rolling basically right I got the capital to do a freaking amazing job amazing project oh my word yeah so and and I had to conquer Goshen College's trust as well in terms of letting me play on their facility, letting me mm -hmm. practice on their facility. So, yeah, so the first year was a little bit tough for lots of reasons because I had to prove to everybody that I was worth capable, the trust, right? The capable, the trustworthy, that I'm gonna, that I'm not gonna damage their image because they're putting their image on my club. Yeah. So it was a, it was a very interesting, and I understand that too. I, I would be skeptical a little bit on trusting a person that I don't even know. Right. And, but yeah. Right. And you haven't seen the work yet. Yeah. Right. You haven't seen you the, the product yet. You know this person as, as a person, but mm -hmm. not as a business person, a businessman or yeah, entrepreneur. Yeah. And it's not, it's completely different. Uh, a good person doesn't mean it's a good business person. Right. Right. That's so true. That's yeah. The, the it takes a different uh, caliber of person to be able to, the, the person, the quality of person doesn't always dictate the fact that they're going to be able to be successful. There's so many assholes that are amazing businessmen. <laughs> yeah. And they're so good businessmen because they're assholes. Yeah. There's so many nice people who you don't want them to run your business. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. It goes both ways. Right. So, ways. so, uh, so you get the capital. Do you start then recruiting people or are you assembling a team of people or how'd that start working out or what? I, I saw the project as in two fronts. Okay. On the field and off the field. Okay. And of course, on the field, I don't have. I, I'm not going to be a head coach. I consider myself playing, but not being a head coach. Okay. So I had to hire somebody to be that person, and I consider some people. Some people, yeah. I, and then I I consider one person, and this person said, "Okay, I'm I'm down for it," and I trusted this person. But then in the end, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. The person said, "Uh." Actually, we're not going to do it. And Tyler men men messaged me, hey, do you have a head coach? And then, yeah, I said I entered in a meeting with Tyler and just clicked. Mm. And Tyler is our head coach. He played for Goshen High School. He played for Goshen College. In 2014, he was the state championship w champion with, with Goshen High School. Wow. The soccer team. He was the only one ever, that team. But, yeah, he was the head coach for Ancilla College. Okay, junior yeah. junior college in, mm -hmm. in Michigan. Ancilla, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he's, he was a brand new coach, and I said, okay, let's let's go. I'll trust you, and you're going to just yeah. lead this project. And clicking, too, is a thing. It is. You know, if you yeah. can work with that person, that makes sense. Is he still the Ancilla College coach as well, or is he now full-time? No, so he How's was the Silla head coach for for a season, and then he went to Grace College to finish his no way start his master's degree. Okay, so he's that's, at Grace now. Yeah, he's at Grace now. Okay, that's where I graduated. Okay. Yeah. So Pretty I, close by. Yeah, not so, not far at all. Not far. Yeah, their their soccer team is very good. Okay. Yeah. Extremely good. I went to like two soccer games. <laughs> yeah. Their basketball was where I would go, but they were yeah they they've got good teams for sure. Yeah, they're. Yeah. Big into that. Goshen College needs to 
match them. Yeah, but Goshen College's basketball team, I don't think, has the hype that Grace did. Um, but anyways, yeah. yeah. I, I have a friend who's on the Goshen College basketball team now, and yeah, we've talked about that. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and I'm the assistant coach of the men's soccer team for Goshen College. Yeah. So... Yeah. But uh, what would you say, I mean, w- when it comes to Goshen College soccer games, is that pretty well attended? It is. It is yeah. the main sport. I would say I would, it's the main sport. Yep. Even though we don't give it back to the fans as we should. Yeah. Yeah. We, they support us like crazy, even though we are losing most of the games. <laughs> yeah. And it was pretty difficult as a player. That's frustrating. It is. Yeah. yeah. But I, we loved it. And every every... After every game, we went and clapped, and we said, "Hey, thank you very much." That that makes a difference. Yeah, to have fans to actually have you because guys supporting. Because we played us. against colleges that have zero people; they have like five people, just the girlfriends of the guys. Right. Yeah. Playing against, and that's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to be grateful for Goshen College to have, yeah, hundreds hundreds of people attending the soccer the soccer yeah. game. Yeah. That's but yeah, all. so I was t- I was telling you that Tyler just clicked with me, and then he was. The, the head coach and then in the first season with Goshen City FC we reached the final of the conference wow and we didn't expect that at all right and you came out of the gate like running bro holy cow yeah, yeah. came out of the gate like crazy and yeah Tyler, Tyler led the boys I was the assistant coach I had another assistant coach that now is a player Tim okay but yeah, it was just a crazy first year because it was so successful off the field with all the sponsors, all the buying from the community that we didn't talk to it about yet. Yeah. We are still talking about how I was planning the right the, the, the head coach and off the field stuff. But yeah, Tyler was the guy and I trusted him and we went from there. Wow. So yeah, you said you broke it off of uh, two fronts, on the field and off the field. So I'll, I do have more questions about on the field, but let's talk a little bit about off the field. So you've got some sponsors secured. You've raised a more than $15,000. Um, what was the business plan or what was the strategy when it came to off the field, promoting, all that stuff? Like How'd that start to play, play out? Yeah, I think the the biggest things was we needed to secure a home stadium and a okay. place to practice. And of course, the logistics of playing, practicing, traveling, there's so much involved on yeah. everything related to that. Do you have a Game bus? Day. Do you rent a bus? Do you do you guys all just drive your cars to the, you know what I mean? So the, there are some games like that logistics. We, we went to, Spring, one game we went to Springfield, Illinois, it's mm-hmm. five hours away. Yeah. We rented a, a bus mm-hmm. and... There was another game that we went to Wisconsin five hours away again. We ran in a minibus. It's a, a van. A yeah. A van. Yeah. But it, it was too expensive. So what we what I figured out is we're going to carpool and I'm going to help the boys with gas. Yeah. And after the games, whoever came to travel for an away game, we're going to feed them after the game. Nice. Because the experiences that I had with the other teams in the highest level, they cover everything. The players just go there to do the job. Right. Play, win the game, secure the win, and come back home. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's professional. Right? Yeah. And I wanted to recreate that as much as I can. And it is pretty expensive to recreate that. Yeah. Very expensive. Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, I did I did the project as professional as I could towards the players and towards the community. I wanted to connect with the community. We were a sponsor in the lowest level to the first Friday. Oh, we cool. We went there to volunteer our time. We volunteer our time to... Uh, Habitat for Humanity. Yeah. What uh, What first Friday did you go to? Was it a summer one? So it was April, May, and June. Okay. Because I remember walking downtown. It was probably 2023. And there were uh, people playing soccer. It was summer. Yeah. And it was like down, like downtown during first Fridays. And there was like some goal thing that you were trying to hit. That was, was that us. you guys? No way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And the, I remember the first first. And the project is all, only me, right? right? Off the field. Right. It was only me. So I embraced that the highest level I could. So the first Friday we did was April. And I said, okay, we're going to have a booth. We're going to give flyers away. And I'm going to be on the on downtown from with Washington and the Main Street, mm-hmm. I'm gonna be right on that corner juggling the ball with the Goshi City jersey, <laughs> orange. Everybody's gonna see me. Right, he's gonna think, who is that guy? Yeah, and 
yeah, I was just juggling for two hours, three hours. No uh, way. People would stop by and say, hey. And then I'd tell them who I was. Most pe- Some people kno- knew me. Yeah. And had, they waved. And well, most I, people would probably looked at you and you were just the marketing for you guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> somebody had to be. And yeah. I was there juggling. And, and the Goshen Chronicles, do you know? Mm-hmm. Them, they, they were recording. And yeah, the, it was a good way to put ourselves out there and yeah 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 i want to get um i forget what the guy's name is but him uh, the sahib sahib yeah i want to get sahib on the podcast he would love it so we've already been chatting a little bit so tu hablas espanol yeah me un poco that's what that's why i'm gonna get my 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 wife like i said can fluent okay and she translates a little bit so she if she she speaks english as well so yeah yeah so that's the that's all good. In Goshen, this is like if I don't, I I only have. I did you ever play uh, Grand Theft Auto or any of those games where yeah. like I only have half the map unlocked. Like I can only traverse in half because I don't know Spanish. I know a little bit, but now with my wife, dude, the whole map is open, bro. I go to any location. I can talk to anyone. I could, it's so awesome having it's that. Crazy. It's a big it's blessing. A very good example. Yeah. And I felt that way very much so. I didn't think that as a Grand Theft Auto type of thing, but yeah. connections are crazy. Yeah. I started to get to know. There's some, do you know Goshen Stars? They're a uh, travel club, soccer club. Around. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the president of the club is. Are they part of GSI? G- GSA. GSA. They, 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 yeah, they, they are partners, but okay. they're separate. They're separate. Okay. Yeah. So GSA is like the whole. Uh, uh, organization so, GSI, the stars is like the the travel team. Sorry, there's G Y S O. Okay. Goshen Youth Soccer Organization. Okay. There's GSA Goshen G- Soccer Academy. That's okay. a facility. That's an indoor facility. Gotcha. Okay. And I'm thinking G Y S O. Stars. In Goshen Stars. G Y S O is a Goshen College. They do lots of things with kids. Right. Goshen Stars is the traveling team. It's a travel 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 team, soccer travel okay. team. So it's okay. not associated with, with G Y S O at all. No, they are yeah. partners, but they are not yeah. associated. They go and like. Recruit. Yeah, they, they, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. But, yeah, I got to know the president of of Goshen Stars even before doing all this soccer, soccer cre- the, the Goshen City project. But he grew up in Brazil. He, he's he, Brazilian. He, he was born in Brazil. So he speaks fluent Portuguese. His whole family speaks Portuguese. Oh, wow. Uh, Millard Graber. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's that such a Mennonite such last a name. coincidence. Both Miller and Graber are Mennonites, but Miller Graber is such a Mennonite name. I love yes. it. Yeah. And yeah, he helped me connect with so many people in town. As well. Wow. Yeah. To be that, that is cool. And then to have that connection. And it's, yeah, it's like, hey. And because, I don't know, like, the Mennonite culture is just people helping people. People trusting yeah. people. Yeah. If maybe I was in another small town, It'd be I, different. I wouldn't be able to pull that off. How crazy is you get pulled into Goshen? Like that is that's a little bit wild that it all all pulls together. You want another beer? No, I'm good. I'm still I still need to finish that. Right. If you want one, just grab one. Thank you. That's a good beer. Yeah, I like it. They're uh, based out of Indy. Okay. So, yeah, I like. Yeah. I like but Goshen. in terms of yeah. connections, it's like Team Team Def, uh, Grand Theft Auto GTA. Yeah, it's the maps and the locking, huh? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And I speak Spanish. Yeah. Portuguese and Spanish are very similar. Yes. And I went to Argentina a couple of times with my parents. and That's where my wife yeah. lived for nine months. Okay. So, yeah. Buenos Aires? Yes, she okay. did. Yeah. I love that city. Yeah. She is. They are crazy for soccer. Bro, I am. Did you go there? I have not, but I want to go there now with their new president, Javier Malay. I've been following him, bro. He's no. nuts, man. Is he? Yeah, he's so in, nuts. In which, in which way? He's, um... I, I think in a good way could be really bad. Oh, sorry. It could be really bad. It's always good and bad. Yeah. Always it, very good and very bad. He's, he is cutting all of the government. He's just like, um, literally, he is a libertarian. So if you're familiar with politics at all. Libertarian, what do you mean by that? So you've got liberal and you've got conservative. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of the two spectrums that we live in here in America. Libertarian is almost like a third it's almost like a triangle. I don't know if that makes sense, but libertarian is like, um, let me live in peace and you live in peace. Don't mess with me. I won't mess with you. Let's not have government involved at all. And so he's going in and cutting all programs. He's like, we don't need a department of education. We don't need a department of this. And he's just cutting it all out. And so it's like, okay, but 
um, it's, it's just fascinating to see because for a long time, I, from my understanding, Argentina has been kind of bogged down and the currency has been deflated and yeah, it's, it's shit show. Yes. And so he's like, I'm just going to just, just rip out the government. Cause I think they're the ones that are clogging cancer. every, the cancer. And so it's a very, every country. Yes. Yeah. A third world country. It's the, cause the government just mooches off everything. They're sucking everything up. He's like, these buildings aren't beautiful. Why do we need a, a department of, you know, beautification of be- buildings? Like he's just like, let's cut every. So he did it. It's very drastic. So I'm excited to see how it works out. Yeah. Could be awful. Could be good. <laughs> I hope it's good. The problem of politics is you can never do anything alone. Yeah. You need to have the buy-in from the other politics. Yeah. Politicians. Yeah. He's the president though. So he got in, which is everyone they weren't expecting that and so now it's um it's it's going to be a case study of what happens when someone comes in and just says forget the government let's cut it to the bare minimum and so we'll see we'll see yeah but it's kind of got me excited like that and el salvador is another place i want to visit that's a little different but um i'm big into bitcoin so it's cool to see them like as a country go all into bitcoin and they've really cleaned up their um the prison population as well. I don't know if you've seen any of that stuff. No. I'm plugged into some, like just random things I'm plugged into. I'm like, this is so El sick. El Salvador and Bitcoin. That's mm-hmm. pretty yeah. random. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, but anyways, yeah, Argentina is really cool. And Allison, my wife is like, we got to go back. And so I'd like to do that. I used to work at Minnow Travel, which um, was- I heard about it. Mm-hmm. They probably did some of the trips that Goshen College would go on. I know Goshen would have- um, what do they call it? It's like a 10 day, uh, cross cultural experience. Yeah. I'm sure you didn't have to do it cause you already had your cross cultural experience coming to the United States. Right. You know what is an SST? SST. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I'm an never ending SST. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm diving deeper and deeper into American culture. Yeah. You're getting like, yeah, you're getting the taste of it every single day. Yes. So the, and, I, and I married an American. <laughs> that's yeah. dude. Yeah. That's a SST right there for right sure. There. Yeah. Another level. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, when I worked at Mill travel, uh, one of the, the, um, trips that I always wanted to do was hike in Peru. And go do some of the, like those mountain. So, anyways, I've always wanted to go there, but yeah, I would uh, love that too. Yeah, Peru is very famous for their altitude, and mm-hmm. there are some teams soccer related that go play in Peru or Bolivia, and the they train play, right, and they play in the high, the high, so high in altitude, yeah, that the ball moves uh, faster. Wow, and they cannot breathe as good. Yeah, so the teams that are used to it get advantage of the teams that don't play like yes three thousand meters Mm -hmm. yeah meters yeah yeah above Uh, sea uh, level yeah and even though they're a shitty ass team they're winning (laughs) because they're they're the home court advantage yeah 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 uh they do that in denver i know people train not i I don't know about soccer but i know both football and mma they'll train in denver at a higher altitude and then when they come back down to sea level they've got yeah it just is like uh exactly crazy that's nuts yeah um so okay i do have a question about let's let's go back to the football club how you started choosing who was going to play because you know you assembled a team of people together that did go and and totally like absolutely dominate it's like do really well so the thing is when we put it out there goshen college we have a semi professional soccer team yeah you can imagine how the community soccer community went mm. crazy right crazy, in goshen crazy, crazy crazy yeah everybody was sharing it everybody was in mostly the people that were connected with social media instagram facebook it's not as trend right as instagram and instagram was it is our main uh, platform to share to share content gotcha both both of them but instagram is more powerful because the young adults mm-hmm. that are there but yeah so mm-hmm. when we posted everybody was hyped up and it was yeah we, we hosted an, a tryout and 110 people uh signed oh up for wow the 80 people ended up coming to the tryouts. And <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. 110 people. Yeah, I'll do it. And then only 80 come yeah, out. But they still, were, 80 is nuts. Yeah. 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 So we had to cut it down to 40. Okay. And then we had to cut it down to 30. Okay. So we had a good 
30 solid players. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. And, it, and it was the first team, for, uh, first year. Right. For the second year, now we have even bigger... Uh, Audience, audience the reach yeah people are you a lot of people know we you proved everybody that we are a solid team we, mm -hmm. reached, we reached the final of the conference yeah and the final of the conference uh con coincidentally was the round 32 of the nationals of the upsl is the league that we played so we played okay. the nationals wow on our first year wow we nobody thought about it that would be even reachable. Yeah. I didn't think about it. So <laughs> It wasn't in your like goal plan. No. The, yeah. the goal plan was to finish, I think, sixth so we can make it to the playoffs. Wow. We finished third and we were able to host the playoff. In Goshen. Wow. In Goshen. But yeah. the team forfeit, they, they were from Illinois. Oh, uh, yeah. Springfield, Illinois, so they couldn't make it because it was five a hours. Wednesday, five-hour drive. Yeah. They work. Yeah. They couldn't make it. That makes sense. Yeah. That's another thing about the region. We don't have enough same professional teams to to make a conference just here. Right. That's what I was going to ask. The teams we had to travel two hours to play minimum. Wow. Just to even be able to play. Just yeah. To be, to be because it's like may, probably Chicago area is a big place. You said Dayton. Do you guys go over Dayton, or is it not that far? No, that's pretty far. Okay. That's another. That's the Ohio, Ohio conference. So is it mainly Michigan? No, Michigan. None? So it's just Chicago. Illinois. It's just Illinois. It's just Illinois. And a little bit now of Indiana. we have two teams in Indiana. Northwest. Northwest okay. Indiana. Okay. Uh, so like they're near, new. They're brand new. Near? Um, Gary. Gary. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So which is still Chicago. Chicago, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Hammond, Indiana. Yeah, I know Hammond. Yeah. Which is Hammond. also Chicago. Yeah, but it's, it's yeah. literally like, like... It's closer. A little so, closer. Yeah, yeah. Can I go to the bathroom? Yes. Can we cut down? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Hey friends, Tim and from the future here, and I uh, just want to let you know that for some reason my video didn't capture. Um, I have the file, but it can't be played on my phone. So uh, for the next 40 minutes or so, 30, 40 minutes or so, um, there's no video. So at least we got the first part. Uh, sorry guys, I, uh, technology does that. <laughs> you know, so. Um, yeah, like call back to what I said at the start. If you do have uh, iPhones or anything like that, let me know because um, that would help with situations like this. So, all right. Well, uh, enjoy the rest of this conversation. So sorry that the video didn't work. Bye. Or, all right. All right. Let's. Yeah. Where were we? I don't remember. <laughs> it's the... You're in the teams from Gary and. Yeah. So yeah, Hammond. We talked about the. There's so many people, there's so many teams not even close to here. And now they're starting to pop up or whatnot. Yeah. Um, but we were also talking about getting into the, the semifinals. Um, you guys had the tournament at Goshen. They forfeited. There's a quarterfinals. We, we couldn't. It would be so nice to host the quarterfinals here in Goshen. People would come like crazy. But before we talked about further, I would like to come back a little bit and yeah. talk about the first home game. Yes. Because the whole project, I worked more than a year, and the whole project was towards how to be attractive to sponsors. It yes. comes down to home games. If I have thousands of people in the home games, of course the sponsors will say, oh, that's amazing. I'm going to put money because my brand is going to be right. uh, advertised. Showed. Yeah, they can see yeah. it. Well, and you have the numbers then. Yeah. To, to back it up. Right. Yeah, so the first home game, I didn't know what to expect because we didn't have the first... That was the first time ever that we would host the, a game. Yeah. And because, coming back a little bit before to explain that, the, fir the season started with four away games. Okay. One of the home games that we should be playing in April, Goshen College said, hey, we cannot host any games in April because of our fields. Yeah. you got to figure it out. So we played. Was it because it was wet and rainy and they didn't want people to mess up the fields? Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. Okay. You don't have to get into. I, I totally. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And so we played four away games. So the whole season, the, we were in the middle of the season, four games in. The fifth game was home, only the fifth game. So we were building expectations and making posts, and people were getting to know each, uh, the, the club. Yeah. And then May sixth was the home game. Twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty three. Okay. And it was crazy because I. I was coaching a club in Middlebury, okay. travel club, and I was in Indianapolis coaching the, the team. So I had to drive back like crazy. It was a whole mission to to have the game day ready. And yeah, all the stuff that goes into it, and you don't know what to expect, who's going to be here, what, how this is all going to run. 
Yes, but I knew that lots of people would come. Yeah. But I don't know how many would come. Right. But when the game started, we had more than 500 people, 600 people in the stands. People didn't stop showing up. Oh, showing my up, word. Showing up, showing up. And that was crazy. And we were winning 5-0 in the first half. Oh, wow. That was like... Bro, on top of the world. True. Yeah. Top of the world. And then I was in the stands with my wife. She was pregnant and yeah. was just watching the game. Just having fun. Uh, and that was that was one of the best days of my life. Wow. Just seeing all the hard work, the dream, or just a thought of opening and a soccer club when I was a college student in my dorm. Yeah. And now we'll look at where you're happened. at. Wow. With the city, the college, a bank. Yeah. And 600 people in the stands. We won the game 8-0. <laughs> first home game. It was yeah. like crazy. Wow. And that was something that... And the kids. Imagine the kids. Yeah. They were having a ball. They were having the yeah. best day of their lives. Yeah. They were remember been, that game for, forever. When they did the away games, there was just the opposing team's fans. Yeah. And then I'm maybe I'm going out on a limb, but I, I don't think there's probably 600 people at any of the games, you know. No, we didn't play any game with... That many people. With that many people. N not even close. Yeah. The only the semifinal that we played against Swiss Loco, it's a Polish team. Oh. They are crazy. Really? Yeah. They drink and they <laughs> party and they do everything you can imagine. And yeah, the, the semifinal, we played against them on their field. We played against them in our home too. Mm -hmm. we, and then we tied. It was 1-0 for us until the end. And the referee gave like 11 minutes extra time. I don't know why. And they scored in the end. It was 1-1. It was the only game that did, we didn't win. Wow. It was a, the best game. They're a pretty good team. Wow. And we played in the semifinal on their field now. And we won 2-1. Wow. And they were mad. Oh, I bet they were. And there was a PK that the referee didn't give to them. Somebody kicked the ball on, on somebody's hand and the referee didn't give it. So they were so mad. They wanted to fight us. They, they we had to call the cops to, for the referees to leave the stadium. Wow! And they they had probably hundreds of people in the stand, more than a hundred for sure. And they, it was such a nice, beautiful party before the game. And then in the end, they were just ready to fight. Wow! <laughs> Bro, those Polish guys are crazy, dude. Yeah. That's... And I come from the third world country, so I know exactly what what yeah. happens and. That's just how Part you of the learn, culture. How, how you love your club. Just you're yeah. ready to kill for a club. Yeah. But yeah, yeah that was cool. I've seen the... And that was... Those were the two highlights of the season. The first home game yeah. and the semifinal when we beat them. On the, oh. We were going to the final the first year. Oh, we were man. Like, the, the peak right there. The that's right there. That's awesome. Because finally, we don't care if we win or don't. We are in the final. Yeah. Yeah, we can do this. We yeah. can do this. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I've seen uh, movies and stuff where, you know, clubs are going against other clubs and just beating the crap out of each other. I mean, there's like famous movies of like, I'm like, oh, that's, a, it was UK. I think it was UK clubs. The hooligans. Were, the hooligans, yeah. And they were banned. That that That's something that for real happen, happened. Really, yeah. In the 80s, they were banned from the uh, international competitions because of their fans. They were killing each other. <laughs> Just going at it, yeah, yeah, it's not. And in Brazil, they they put on Facebook, "Hey, let's meet up and let's fight, let's kill each other." No way. And they go there and they kill each other. Oh my word! Yeah, so yeah, you know what? Argentina, what's... the whole Latin America is like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's their life. That's, that's their, their team. Life. There's religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You talk crap. You go down here. You gotta yeah. get punched in the face. Well, and if your team loses, man, you're down in the dumps. For, and for a while until your team wins it's like it but then if your team wins and is the champions you're in heaven yeah yeah it doesn't matter if you don't have a house right <laughs> it doesn't matter if house. your life if your wife leaves you dude, yeah it team doesn't is, matter yeah that's crazy yeah that is a it is a religion you're right it yeah is. um so when you had that big of a home team our home game did did uh that garner more sponsorship or conversation because of that was, was that kind of like a um hey this is what we can bring to the table exactly yes plus the community services that we did we said to our players i i had this idea every player will be required to do a community service i don't have okay. thousands of dollars to help the community but i have 40 players here that will make a difference in the community if we go out there and put our hands to work and help out that way so yeah that too and then 
bringing the travel clubs from this county to the game and walking with the kids on, before yeah. the games and then yeah. halftime they play and then they interact with the players. That's cool. So the whole project was... That's was very cool. integrated. Everything's kind of... And then they can see what they could do after yeah. college, after and high school. As I was doing this project... I play video games since I was a kid yeah. creating my soccer club. Yeah. And so I like I know a lot about it. It's like you're a musician that you listen about this music rock and roll yeah. since you're a kid and you play guitar. Of course you know lots of things, right? Yeah. Or yeah. So it was very natural for me because soccer is my life is ingrained in my life so deeply that this just came natural. Yeah. And for me it was just common sense. Okay, why wouldn't we connect with this youth? Right. Why wouldn't we give community service to the community why wouldn't we do those things right but and then the experience of playing uh in the summer leagues and being like oh this is what i liked this is what i didn't like let's make sure that this has these aspects exactly. to make everyone i mean that those on, small on things and on and off the field right i remember off the field the, with the player the, the team in, in like ohio, in, oh, ohio. ohio yeah we went to a shopping mall and we read a book's Ch ch children books to children. Oh wow! And we were like heroes for them, <laughs> superheroes. Yeah. And that was something that I would never expect to do, but because of a semi professional club gave me the opportunity to do, and that just stays in your mind. I will never forget the day. Right. And I brought that mindset yeah. or that experience yeah. to to this to this idea. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, so you had you whittle it down to thirty. And do those thirty? Did those thirty stay for this year? And now you're building on top of those thirty, or did some of them leave, or did you start from scratch again, or like, what's this season looking like now, um, since you've got one season under your belt? I would say we raised the level, okay, the, the barrier. So I would say half of the team stayed, but mm -hmm. the other half couldn't make it, and that's just how life works, right? If you're yeah. If you're not on the same level as the other guys, some somebody will replace you and we will do the job. And now we have more visibility, so more of the better players want, want to play. Want to play for us. So that's yeah. just good overall. Yeah. And yeah, so we're Well, and you guys went to the semifinals, right? So it's like finals. Yeah, oh finals. I'm sorry. You went to the finals and they're like, Yeah, why wouldn't we want to play on that team? Yeah. So we yeah. proved everybody on and off the We field. beat that Polish team. Like, come on, why wouldn't you want to play for us? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and then we went to the final against the team that won four times in a row, and we did play against them already. Pre previous on that season, we lost three zero on okay. their field, and we played the final on their field again. And the first half was zero zero. Wow, we were there, and we hit the post, but but then they start scoring, and it was three zero in the end. But yeah, it was amazing to see that we reached the final. And but then the season is over. Like you, you worked so hard for that day, <laughs> and then there's nothing after that. Yeah, it's, it's a weird feeling. But there are so many fans from Goshen that drove that drove to Chicago to watch us. Wow, yeah. So that was pretty that's kind of cool as well. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So the project was very successful on and off the field, and. Yeah, it's crazy to even describe, and sometimes I don't want to. It's a little bit of a roller coaster. Sound, I, don't, I don't want to sound cocky, or right? Or right. In any way that I, that I can, but it's just a reality that the project was so well in every aspect of it. Yeah, and I'm so happy and proud, and yeah. Is um same head coach as last year? It is okay. Tyler Bourne. What's your um? What's who? Who is the? How old is the oldest player? How young is the youngest player? I would say the oldest player is twenty six. Okay. Sam Marchi is a center back from England. Okay. He just graduated. Graduated from. He's gonna graduate from Goshen College this semester, actually. Okay. And the youngest. We have a high schooler from Goshen. He, he's still in high school. He's a senior high school. He's a goalkeeper, Tomas from okay. Goshen High School. Yeah, yeah. We have another, a couple of other eighteen-year-olds that are going to Grace. Yeah, Julian. Okay. So it's a big. So it's kind of like in between. Yeah, yeah. Are, are they all um, like uh, college, high school, or are there some of them that are just working and then playing? Yeah, there are some that, you know, some. 
the Latino population, some don't want to go to college. Yeah. And Which is fine. Just yeah, just go to to a factory and make good money. Yep. And just play football. Hang out yeah. and play football and just live their lives and yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I that And was, they're good soccer players. Oh yeah. Yeah. I I know um a lot of my Latino friends, they are they play a lot in like the indoor facilities and they're playing all, all the time. And so it's surprising that there hasn't been a club. It's just been friends or pickup games or, you know what I mean? Like, um, as I was doing the project, I will say how in the world we don't have a soccer team here. Yet. Yeah. No one spearheaded it, man. That was, that's, we did have back in the day, but I think it was just for towards women, mm. but it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Oh, we don't have a soccer team, I mean, not in, only in Goshen, but in Elker County. Right. I right. heard there's a lot of Latinos, there's a lot of soccer in Elker County as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Goshen is just a small piece of the pie. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, that's, that's wild. But the history of soccer is in Goshen. Yeah. Because it started kind of. I want to create a documentary about the history of soccer in Goshen. Ooh. Because that, there's so much, so much that I don't even know. I'm, I'm just a. Yeah, outsider. Yeah, you've come in and kind of seen a little bit. And I'm diving deeper and learning and getting to know so many people, and I can see all this map. <laughs> what's going on? Yeah. How do we tie this all? How does this all tie together? Yeah. Right. Because yeah, it seems like people are doing their own thing here in this town in mm -hmm. terms of soccer. That yeah, we need to just bring everybody together and just work together. What um what are your goals for this year? Like, are you guys are I'm, I'm assuming already in? Uh, you're already playing. We right. should have our first the home opener should be against Chicago Fire Academy. Okay, it's an MLS team. Okay, so that should be the best team that we would face. Uh, Thursday, but it got rained out. Oh we had yeah, to postpone it. So we we didn't play any games yet. Okay, so your we first are the only team in the conference that didn't play games yet. Wow. Our first home, our first, we had a friendly game this Sunday. Okay. But it's not towards, it doesn't count. Yeah. But our first game will be this Sunday in Hammond, Indiana. Okay. Yeah. An hour and, and then, a half. And then we're going to play the second game away as well in Chicago. Okay. So the third game is going to be the home opener for the league May 4th. Okay. So it's going to be similar from last year. Yeah. The first home game will be the first weekend of May. Here and yeah, at, and you guys are still playing at Goshen College. Yeah, all all games are going to be at Goshen College. That's cool. Yeah, what what does your guys' practice look like? Are you guys practicing multiple times a week, or like what's that look like? Yeah, so we started practicing the beginning of March. So we practiced four weeks in March. Okay. Most of the practices were at Goshen High School, and the turf field. Do you know the football field? Mm -hmm. They don't have soccer soccer lines. Oh, uh, okay. But. It, it does work fine for us. They have goals that we could bring. So, yeah, we practice there from t normally four times, four, four days a week. Wow. Okay. So, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Sometimes it's Tuesday to Friday. Mm -hmm. But normally it's Tuesday to, thir to Thursday. So, three days a week. Okay. Yeah. So, you do a, a couple more at the start and then you kind of... So, catch up because the winter, so many guys don't have a place to play and to get in shape, to stay yeah. in shape. So... Yeah. yeah, that is the one thing about Indiana is the winter. Yeah, is not. And if you don't play high school or college in the fall, there's no way, there's nowhere to play. To, to there's no place to play. Yeah. Other than Sunday leagues. Really. Yeah. Yeah. And the league that we play, we could play spring and fall. That's how this league works. Mm -hmm. Same a professional league. But we don't have facilities in, in, when it comes to the fall. High school is in season. Goshen College is in season. They have men and women. And if we wanted to add Goshen City to that equation, that would... Too much. Too much. Yeah. And they are grass fields, so it damages the grass. If it's turf, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, if it's grass, then it's no good. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Is there... Yeah, I wonder if there's other places that might be... That could open up. Because there is so much soccer in this area. You would... Yeah, we could go to South Bend. We could go to... Napanee, they have a very nice facility. Yeah. Wawasee... They have a. Uh, I'm thinking like GYSOs. They have fields that, but they're probably indoor. Oh, is it? Yes, yeah, like futsal. Because I know there's um there's uh fields, uh kind of near the mill school. 
that that that's uh, it's not kind of a country road, but you see it. They've got huge lights. It's all outdoors, and then there's some over by the Walmart. Um, I don't know if that's south of town, but yeah, I, I wonder if it, yeah, we may not have stands or. But then it wouldn't make sense in terms of the off the field project. Mm. In terms of bringing hundreds of people to the stadium. Yeah. How do you get that? Yeah. If you can't, no. if they just are standing there, that's not the same as no. sitting and being part of the. So yeah. as of now, it's just a summer right. type of thing. That makes sense. And it makes it more special because it's just once a year, two, three months of the year. Right. Yeah. And everyone's like building up anticipation for it. And then it for happens. The summer, like during the winter and then the spring comes and it's still cold. And then when the summer breaks down, you can come to our games. Yeah. That's kind of kids cool. out of the house. Yeah, things are kind of uh, awakening right now too in this area. Um, okay, so a question that's not football related. What? What's? Yeah, go for it. What's one of the biggest like cultural differences from going from Brazil to America? Like, what was one of those things where you're like, dude, what are they doing? <laughs> like, what? Why do they do this? And and what are they doing? Uh, socializing. <laughs> okay. How people socialize. In Brazil, everybody says hi to each other, say uh, gre greets. Yeah. Yeah. But like, you, if you see a person one day and you have a small conversation, you're waiting for the bus, like a pub public transportation in Brazil is huge. Mm -hmm. If you say something and the next day you say the person, you're, you're you going to say, have hey. something going on there and say, hey, how are you doing? I remember yeah. you or something. Yes. Here in the US, I went to Virginia and that was so difficult to connect with. Americans in, in specifically, just because of the culture shock. For Latinos, were more were easier. For internationals, it was easier. But yeah, so yeah, there there was some uh, an episode that I was talking with this person, and we had a good conversation for 20, 30 minutes. And the next day, I saw that person, and then we passed by, and then I was waiting to say hi, and this person just passed by. And oh, anything. what? Yeah. yeah, that might be an East Coast thing. I don't think so. I think it's here too. And you guys are different. Yeah. I yeah I know um, I've heard from people that East Coast and this is a generalization but they are a little bit more close. Uh, yes closed would be this yeah I think Amer I don't know I come from a culture that is extremely open mm -hmm. so if you put in the spectrum Brazil is in the end of the spectrum extremely cool, and that can be bad for if you see yeah. So yeah. Americans wouldn't like that. We'd greet people kissing each other in the cheeks. Right. That can, could be... Yeah, it looked like, totally different here. Yeah, totally yeah. different here. Right. But, yeah, and there's a good story about me arriving in Virginia. Okay. And first week, and my friend brought me to the girls' apartments, the girls' rooms, and there were some boys, some girls, all soccer players, and I shake every boy hands and I kiss every girl's cheeks oh wow and I was the only one that did that because that's what we do in my country and yeah nobody said hey don't do that yeah and so they're all kind of like me. looking at you <laughs> and we laughed so hard after that and that's a story to tell that happens that's happens. that that's not that bad but yeah so in terms of different cultural differences yeah it was very difficult to create yeah. that relationship with well and I could see that too if you're so used to like I mean I've been there I'm a very open person too so i totally understand when i you, see someone, you are in the end of the spectrum yeah I, an American. I am and I've, i get told that by other americans because it's like i went to high school with this guy i've not seen him for 12 years and i see him in the in the grocery store i'm gonna go say hey how you doing da, 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 da. nobody and they're like they're like walking the other way because they don't want to talk to me because they don't know what to say you know and me i'm like yo what's up how's it going you know yeah. that that's me and and i get kind of made fun of it for for that sometimes by other of my friends because they're like dude don't why would you do that but i can imagine if that's your whole culture and then you come it would almost be like very rude i would have been it's offended if someone that i just talked to for 20 minutes doesn't even look at me just walks past like yeah. what did i do wrong like why why do you hate me yeah and <laughs> yeah. i was 18 so yeah cool. I'm still learning what life is about. I'm still learning now. But when I was 18, I just knew what Brazil was. Right. And coming here, and that's it's a huge shock. Yeah. Food, it's a huge shock as really? well. Really? Yeah. yeah. What was? We, we eat so much healthier oh, yeah. than, than here. I think fruits, everyone. It's a tropical country, so we have abundance of fruits. Yeah. Fresh fruits, fresh veggies, anywhere, everywhere. Here it's a little bit more difficult because of the weather, because yep. how 
the economy works, the, the companies, it's much more profit, profit, profit yes. in terms of quality, quality, quality. Yeah, there's not very much quality. Yeah, but you cannot grow a pineapple in your backyard. Yes, in that's Brazil, true. You could yeah, yeah, it takes how much. Yeah, yeah, we don't have any of that. Like it's in the bananas that I've I've had my whole life is just one type of banana. I know there's different varieties and the oranges you know. in Brazil. There's Tons. hundreds of yeah. or different types of oranges. Uh that's that, that's frustrating because I I love citrus. Like it's but yeah, we only have one type of orange. And the ones that arrive here is not as near as good as the ones that you yeah take from the tree. Right. Well, it's I so we I garden. My wife and I garden. We love gardening, and um, one of the things that we grow a lot in this area, in in our yard in our garden is tomatoes, and so I love the variety of tomatoes I can grow because I'll grow some that are purple. You know, I've got green and red, these reds and orange and small, large, and like they look like a pear. You know, you, uh, but you're right. You walk into the store and it's one type of orange, and it's always been one type of orange my whole life. It's like that's the orange, yeah. You know, and that I when I lived I lived in Florida for a year. We had tangelos. We had a lot great for like they had tons of different mixes of oranges. So I got to taste a little bit more of those ripe different types, but probably not even to the level that's in in Brazil. You know, yeah, Florida probably the weather is much yes, better. yes, very tropical. Yeah, yeah. There, there. It's interesting too. Um, People, well, and it's weird because like here we have these forests, you know, and you're seeing the seasons. I love the seasons. That's something we don't have in Brazil. Yeah. And and that's what I realized when I was in Florida is like, man, I miss the seasons. I can miss the, just the, the spring as everything's coming alive and then the fall when it's all red and I just growing up with it. I love it. And so when I was away from it for a year or two, I'm like coming back. I almost got a little like teary eyed when I came back to Indiana to see like oh here's trees like it felt it felt home yeah for me because i've lived here for so long yeah what was winter like when you when when you first experienced it I, and, and you said it was different from virginia to here but what was it like here i at both first time you experienced it which i'm guessing was in virginia and then what's it been like living <laughs> it's always difficult yeah but when you're with the boys <laughs> and you're 18 19 yeah you you make the best out of it yeah so yeah, but it's it's not enjoyable for me. I like to be outside. I like to an outside person completely. I'm very f social, mm -hmm. and winter is just depressing. Yeah, extremely depressing. You cannot just go for a walk or for a bike ride or f to see a friend or yeah. It's it's it, it, there are so many ba it's, barriers. Yeah, to make that happen. Yes, and summer is just you're in your flip flops. T-shirt, yeah. shorts, and then you're out. Go run, you go, go run, bike, yeah. Anything. Yeah, there is so go much. Go to and watch live music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a great Wednesday move, right? We, yeah, we do that. We really In the enjoy. winter, it's inside. Yeah, you need a ski. I and, love it. Yeah, okay, but it's not an every week thing, right? And it's expensive, and um, I know for me, when the winter comes, I I have to take a walk every day, so. I do it in the winter. I don't do it every day, but it's that's one of the things that helps me get through winter because it is so easy just to stay inside and stay in a cave. I feel like my house is a cave. I call it cabin fever, and there's a reason for that. You just feel like you're itching Never to get out. It. Yeah, ca cabin fever. Cabin fever. Yeah, it's um, you're you're stuck in the cabin. You're stuck you're in the cave. Yeah, go. Cr yeah, going crazy. And so. Um, I love that there's paths nearby here. So I go and take my a long walk and I want my face to get like almost like red from just being outside in the cold. And that's how I know, okay, I'm, I'm doing okay. But it's yeah, tough. Yeah, that's not for me. Yeah. That's it's, not for me for a Brazilian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to put on six layers of clothes. and Yeah. It's yep. it's not easy. And driving is not fun. Three socks, two sweatpants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you get the right clothes, it's not too bad. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's an investment. Yeah. So winter is not enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like everything in life, you give more value to the summer mm -hmm. when you don't have the summer. Right. It's kind of like the football league. Right. Yeah. You have those three months. It's like, dude, this is where it's at. Yeah. You know, that's that's Indiana. You only have three or four months and then it's like, all right, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's nuts.
It is. Uh, yeah, dude, I'm out of questions, bro. We're we're at um an hour and ten minutes. So okay, it's been pretty solid. It's been pretty solid. Um, thank you so much for coming on here and yeah. and hanging out and and chatting. I really have appreciate it. Has been it. a pleasure to just talk about it. I love when we talked about. I don't know. It's just. I think people, most people, like when they talk about their projects themselves, their yeah. families, and just dive deeper because we never do that, right? Right. Normal people. I'm a normal person. Nobody just dives in into my life, and I love telling my stories. And I know most people that most people that come here, they love doing that too, right? Yes, they do. Have you ever had somebody doing that to you? Um, yeah, kind of. Yeah, I've had a couple interviews, but not not the same. Not the same. It, it, when it's yes. Kind of. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that nice? It is nice, though. Yeah. Could to, when you have knowledge on something and you're passionate about it and you get to sit there and talk about it and the person's it actively listening. Yeah. And I love to listen. That's one of the things is like actively listening, hearing it, and then asking more questions about it. And I don't know anything about football, you know, and then I get to learn how this club yeah. came about. Like now I've got that information in, in my database. Yeah. And so are you going to start a soccer club and be my competitor? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but uh, anyone who's interested in soccer, I'm going to be talking about you. Yeah. Cause now I have info about it. And so that's the way I do. I'm a connector. I love talking. Like I'm not at the level of Jeremy Stutzman or Jim Alvarez. Right. Cause they've been here for forever. They've got their roots. They've got, but I'm there where I'm talking to people and you have I, your roots. Yeah, as different. much as them, but differently. Yes. Just not as much time as they have, because they're way older than me. But <laughs> yeah, but you cannot buy that. Or yeah, I can't. I can't. I could try, but yeah, someday, someday so, I'll be at the same. And you're doing a fantastic job. Yeah. I, I just got to know you personally, but yeah. I can see that you're doing a, a good job in terms of connecting with the people and yeah, just diving deeper to the community of Goshen. Dude, thank you. It's 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 weird because it's people who are are running in my circle i feel like i have like a sphere like a circle around me and like people just kind of come into it i'm like bro let's talk bro let's talk and it's just like i'm just yeah people who have conversation i'm like this is interesting let's come talk about it and this is a great place to do it and you're in you're taking a memory we've we've talked for an hour and we have this memory now that's like sealed that everyone else can listen to too. It's very weird what it is, and it's fun to to kind of do it. This is also my. You play guitar, right? And that's a creative outlet for you, I'm sure. Like it probably unwinds your mind in a way, or helps you, um, you know, just get out. It's like art, you know. Yeah. This is I feel like somehow part of my way of being creative. Um, I don't draw. I don't. I play a little bit of music, but this is like my way of like creating something. I enjoy yeah. it. So yeah, that's very nice. Do you know Abraham? He's a musician, local musician. Yeah. Did you? I just had him on. Yeah. So I he. Think I, I think I saw it. Yeah. How was it? It was great. He he is so creative. Um, I've he's been on my podcast three or four times. So we've been friends. Ooh. He was at that party I was telling you about with my bathroom. Okay, Ooh. wasn't in the bathroom, but he was like that's he's we're good friends and we've hung out for a long time um but um yeah he he was my first really large podcast my the biggest podcast i did when i first started back in 2019 when i started releasing them in 2019 his episode got like two three hundred listens and uh we did a thing for one of his albums called yellow season and we had the party here as well oh. so it was a listening party we watched a documentary about how he made it like you know maybe a hundred plus people came and then we all listened to the album because we had not listened. He hadn't released it yet. So it was just like this like pop, you know, it was like the home game kind of for his music. And so I've had him on a lot. And what I love about him is he thinks like six steps ahead and not everyone can catch up with him, but I, I I'm, I'm, I see where he's at and I understand what he's saying and I'm able to tie it all together sometimes. And I, I really, in, term, in terms of what, like um, explaining, like uh like he's saying this this and this and he's making this connection to this connection in terms of songwriting songwriting and life and visuals all in one and then i can understand what he's saying so i'm like oh it's like this he's like dude that's exactly what it's like and so i really love um when he's talking i'm i'm, I'm understanding what he, i'm listening and understanding and yeah. so i love chatting with him but yeah abe's awesome I, abraham medellin yeah, yeah i got to know him 2020 when covid happened yeah and then i had a band actually with a with a girl 
Uh, really? Yeah. Me okay. And her and then yeah, we wrote some songs and we were about to perform on kickoff. And yeah, I got I was playing on the sketchy house. Do you know sketchy house? There's yes. Some parties there is right at the college. There is a yes. Tea. He played there a couple times too, right? Yeah. And then I went to I went there to get I was getting to know some people and the Mennonites and they were hanging out there. I went to hang out there and then he was playing guitar there and say, Hey, I'm a musician too. And then we clicked there and yeah, I, I never got to know to know him like very good, but right. yeah, it was always like, Oh, I know you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's awesome, dude. Yeah. Um I never went to any of the the house parties where they would do music at that house. But I would see it, and I I knew of it. I just never got got to get to one yeah. of them. And now it, it doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, I think. What, so weren't they renting it out to college students or something? And then yeah, they were, but it got switched. bought, f- flipped. Yeah. yeah, they probably sold it when it was yeah. peak. <laughs> probably to, to a person that didn't even know that what, what was happening on that. Yeah, the art house. that was being created. There's a lot of house or the like, the the floors are moving. Oh yeah, when we did his um, yellow season reveal, I thought the floors were gonna break it. The the way that it was just yeah. that's such a I love that Quiet. type of live yeah that live music. GB is awesome, but it's not the same as being in someone's house intimately and just like going hard like there's something so cool to that you know there there's there's small and house the shows beer helps beer yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it makes it you can feel the music better so much better with with a little bit you of beer get, you get a a mile ahead yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah um where can people like at the end of the show usually i let people plug anything so may 4th at goshen College is you guys' home game, first home game this season. What, what, uh, what time is that? Seven p.m. Seven p.m. Yeah, okay. Every information, yeah. Just if you follow our Facebook, Instagram, you you're up to date with okay. everything. But there, we have our website, uh, GoshenCityFC.com. Yeah, it's not easy to find information about about the team. Yeah, yeah. I'll post the links as well in in the comments below so people can go and check it out yes sir thank Dude. you for for having me and it was, it was very fun to to share the little knowledge i have about soccer dude yeah yeah i i love that you took this thought and it's like you crushed it you like dominated it. you did so well bro so it's cool it's cool to hear it from like where it is to where it's now and um yeah you should definitely be proud you are proud but you should definitely be proud bro so thank you yeah enrique man thank you so much for coming on thank you very much timon timon yes there we go or whatever it doesn't guys we'll catch you on the next one peace peace out